I want to add the thing, right? So product managers, I've seen this meme somewhere, are the punching bags for the team. So whenever someone is feeling that pressure, they come and punch the punching bag so that they feel relieved and then continue to go to the work. One thing which is annoys me sometimes, decision making under pressure. I mean, what is your perspective on this? Product managers have to deal with in a very simple way to say, hey, people are not trying to put something at you. People are just giving you thoughts so that the overall outcome is a better Especially thing. the team whom I'm working with, like engineers, I try to, to be honest, to be the front face of them and let not them take the pressure and I take that. Build and... something small every time. So even if you make wrong decisions, you will have time to like go back reconvene with the team and then continue to build something else hey everyone uh, welcome to our podcast everything uh, product in this podcast we talk about the uh, latest technology insights and uh, product management concepts this is Srinath. i work as a product manager at jp morgan hi everyone this is funny Buyuru. i'm a product manager at a startup so today uh, we're gonna uh, take a completely different approach uh, from our uh, previous videos I'm sure you guys have uh, watched our previous videos on product management skills as well as uh, some of the top activities that a product manager would do. What today we are going to focus is the top five things or the annoying things that a product manager daily deals with. And uh, if you are uh, if you are aspiring to be a, a product manager, I mean, what are some of the things that you should think through before stepping into this career? Uh, with that being said, uh, I'll want to quickly introduce uh, what we're going to talk about. Then we're going to talk about the those top five skills and share our experience as well. So with that being said, I mean, let me uh, uh, talk in simple terms, right? So imagine uh, there is a big box of uh, colorful Lego bricks. A product manager is someone who is trying to figure out uh, these uh, these bricks and trying to put together and creating some form like a spaceship. So for many, this may sound fun. However, it's very tricky because as a product manager, he or she has to figure out which color a bricks goes where and has to put together and create the spaceship at the same time, agree with stakeholders and a lot of team members to make sure that's the product that um, we need to build. So today, what we're going to talk about is uh, how this Lego building can be fun for few but not for others and we're going to talk about uh, those top annoying things as well as share our experience so with that being said uh, let's go into the top five annoying things uh, that a product manager daily deals with i think the first one uh, funny that comes to top of my mind is emotional quotient which uh, i know we all face can you share your insight on uh, why that's annoying and how a person I can successfully overcome that. Yeah, absolutely, Shrinat. So let's take the same example that you have, right? Product manager has a big bag of Legos and then he's trying to build a uh, spaceship. So let's start with where where all of these things are starting. So you are starting with a customer. You're talking to someone who says that, hey, uh, a spaceship, I want to send it to Mars. Okay, and given that it's going to Mars, I have an idea that uh, it has to be in this color, and it has to have this kinds of logos, et cetera, et cetera. So now we have a certain idea to say, okay, this customer wants this. Uh, maybe let me go talk to my team, add my thoughts as well and talk to my team. Now is when all the things start. So team will have questions. Obviously, everyone has questions. Everyone wants to understand why we are building it in a certain way. And obviously, the spaceship that we are building shouldn't just cater to one customer. Probably the spaceship that we are building should cater to 10,000 customers. So at that point, you need to think about all the common characteristics that you need to build in a spaceship and then go to your team and tell, hey, these are all the things that we need to build. And someone else will come and say, hey, why are we building a spaceship? Instead, why not uh, build a simple rocket that can do basic things? Then someone else will come and ask a question to say, hey, uh, how mu- what is the size of the rocket? Should it have people or should it not have people? If it has people, then what are all the things that we should take? So now you are thinking about 10,000 things in order for you to uh, build a spaceship. So that is when all the emotional question starts, right? We are all humans. We want to listen to everyone's thought process. And then finally, make sure we take the right decision. So as a product manager, you are in the midst of everything. 
and you listening to everyone you making um, choices you making decisions making priority calls to build the right product and be accountable for everything drains you out that's where the emotional quotient comes into picture and that's where product managers have to deal with in a very simple way to say hey people are not trying to put something at you people are just giving you thoughts so that the overall outcome is a better thing so having that strong mindset of developing a product developing as a team etc that helps a lot in terms of reducing that emotional quotient how, how do you deal with in your uh, career yeah i really liked when you related this uh, with uh, the lego example that we spoke about i think that really helps our uh, viewers to understand why that's important i mean likewise you work with so many different people right when we are building a product i mean you're not building for one customer segment you may be building for multiple sub customer segments right so you need to take into perspectives or different customer preferences understandings the different pain points for instance a b2b product manager may have a different pain point versus a b2c so when we are trying to build trying to understand everyone's perspectives and also not only the external customers like internal customers stakeholders uh, who are part of the product building cycle right it's very important to um, give uh, uh, that space uh, to hear what other people are saying and at the end as you said there will be so many things on our head which may be tough to uh, sometimes we may get overwhelmed so if there if you are someone like Uh, who can get easily overwhelmed then in order to uh, come out of that is going to be very tough right so because you need to take all that digest synthesize and put it in a format which other people or engineering teams can easily prioritize and build for you if as a product manager we cannot understand what that is then it's going to be very difficult that's true um the second most uh, what i have uh, seen um as a product manager or one thing which is annoys me sometimes uh, not all uh, i feel like now i mastered it is decision making under pressure i mean what is your perspective on this i don't know if i mastered it yet um it's very difficult so product manager is someone who is supposed to uh, break any barriers for the engineering team which basically means you need to take the right decisions at the right time so that teams have enough time to build the designs build the products test it and then continually launch it out so in order for you to make that happen with the limited information that you might have you will have to constantly make decisions and every decision that you make you are accountable for it because at the end of the day people would come back and say hey this was the decision funny to get that time so which led to either a success or a failure so you always have that constant thought that uh, okay i have to make the right decisions otherwise whatever the team is building is going to is it's a, it's a waste of time so that's a thing that product managers have to learn over a period of time is dealing with the incomplete information and then even though you have incomplete information making sense of whatever things that you have and bringing everyone to a common space and at the same time build something small every time so even if you make wrong decisions you will have time to like go back reconvene with the team and then continue to build something else but if you build something pretty big and then if you end up understanding that the decision that you made was bad you end up wasting a lot of time for people how how do you you deal with uh, things at work so one thing which i'll take uh, like from amazon was we had a leadership principle called have backbone disagree and commit i think as you earlier said i mean we may not always have the complete information to make that right call it's about uh, having that gut feeling disagreeing and commit to your decision and launching that at the same time after launching we may be wrong sometimes i mean it's about learning from our mistakes and failures and going and reiterating and improve, improving right so uh, so that's uh, one thing which is always on top of my head and decision making under pressure i mean as you said one thing which i often practice is i mean especially the team whom i am working with like engineers i try to to be honest to be the front face of them and let not them take the pressure 
and i take that uh, because if i am building something i have a clear view on why i'm doing that way clearly justify rather than pinpointing fingers and creating pressure for the downstream teams which i don't like uh, so that one uh, has been uh, pretty handy for me i want to add the thing right so product managers i've seen this meme somewhere at the punching bags for the team so whenever someone is feeling that pressure they come and punch the punching bag so that they feel relieved and then continue to go do the work so product managers are the punching bags for the team <laughs> yes. i don't know if you feel that way so yeah so for all the viewers out there if one cannot uh, handle pressure or don't like handling pressure then probably product management may not be the right fit for you guys so the third one which uh, i often hear is the constant juggle the prioritization you have always 100 things right so we have to deal that's the reality with the prioritization and build the best products uh, that customers are looking for and the features that they are looking for can you share your like experience around this yeah i see constant juggle in two ways the first one is the daily work itself so i'm sure for anyone who is watching right there are a bunch of videos on youtube that talks about um, a day in the life of a product manager and typically the routine goes like this right you start with looking at your dashboards uh, you start to see if there is any issues with your product did someone complain on any of your slack channels or um, customer feedback etc and then you have stand up and if you are someone who has multiple engineering teams then you have multiple stand ups first thing in the morning after that you might have a customer call then you might have an call with the ops team then you might have another stakeholder call then you might be doing a design session with your design team then you might have couple more uh, customer calls so you are constantly juggling between different things and you are continually context switching your mind which is very essential skill for product managers and if you are someone who wants to have focused work product managers love that as well so i do my focused work like very early in the morning sometimes i just come sit at my desk 6 6:30 in the morning just sit for a couple of hours write a document or sometimes i do that in the evening like or just before going to bed sit for an hour just have my headphones do a pomodoro for 30 minutes and then just sit and write those are things product managers love but they don't get that on a daily basis so that's something that product managers have to master and constantly juggle what do you think shinan yeah prioritization i think in a day of uh, a product manager is very important um, as you said 60 to 70% of our time goes in meetings and there will always be meetings from stakeholders customers or someone from engineering team and all that stuff i mean we have to prioritize in a right way otherwise your all day is going to be in meetings uh, so i'm uh, doing that prioritization not only in terms of uh, the work life or how you manage the day is important but also the number of priorities that we hear from like for instance customer facing teams or engineering teams or uh, the number of like the sev- the severity escalations that we get as well as a lot of customer facing teams who try to i mean uh, reach out to us via email slack and all that stuff so you have this various priorities uh, going on so it's very important to deal with uh, these priorities and sometimes a leadership may say oh this is what we need to focus on so you may need to put all the other ones aside i mean it need not be always the case unless we have a clear justification uh, however dealing with prioritization is very important having a consistent prioritization frameworks when you are building features is very important so if as you said if uh, you are someone uh, who wants like little focused and some guidance on where exactly needs to go then probably the product management may not be the right fit for you um the fourth one which often uh, hear is uh, feedback right so some people may take feedback uh, personally especially in a uh, product management world but ideally it should not be the case we sh- i feel like we should always take feedback as an opportunity for improvement uh, can you share uh, some insight into this Yep absolutely so one book that comes to my mind here is radical candor so product managers are people who have to constantly give feedback and at the same time constantly take feedback so as you continually grow in your career the amount of feedback that you take 
might gradually re reduce and the amount of feedback that you'll have to give increases a lot so you need to be someone who can give feedback it's a very tough thing so giving critical feedback to other people so that they can grow is very important in anyone's career and product managers have to be in the core or center of doing that so if you are someone who cannot either give feedback or take feedback product management is not a career for you because unless and until you are very upfront with people to say hey this is not going good so we need to change or if someone comes to you and says funny this is not going good you have to change it you have to take that feedback and if you are taking it personally and then reacting rather than responding to it then you you are not taking the right decisions the product is not going to go in the right way so feedback is a great tool for product managers and you shouldn't take it like a threat what, what do you think shina yeah one thing which i want to emphasize that you just mentioned is never take uh, feedback personally uh, because it's not uh, being directed to you but directed more towards the product that one may be building right so be responsive rather than reactive so feedback i mean i mean in my experience uh, we receive uh, in different forms uh, whether it's customer facing teams or different tools and all that stuff so uh, we often uh, take a look at that and you especially during uh, our retros or any backlog grooming sessions uh, we try to take that feedback and try to create that prioritization which is very helpful one thing as a product manager which is very important is working backward from the customer pain points customer problem which all comes from this various feedback that's why i was taking if you want to create a vision as a product manager you need to understand what that feedback is think uh, basically from the customer shoes so we can create that backlog product strategy the vision and all that stuff so overall um so customer uh, feedback or whether it's internal customer or external customer whoever it is coming from feedback is pretty important and needs to take it uh, more as an opportunity for improvement i want to add something there shina so i know i didn't mention about the customer feedback right so if you are someone who is in very early stages of a product like you're starting a new product it's in very early stages you have been doing some beta testing with customers etc every customer call that you do i'm sure 90% of that feedback is bad and 10% of that feedback is good so you might be solving a problem but you're causing lot more pain points for the customer so you should be at a seat where you can take all of that you can consume all of that and make meaningful outcome out of it if you can do that the 10 90% ratio that i'm talking about is quickly going to change to 90 10 and you're just going to get 10% issues and 90% of it will be excellent yeah that's a great point there one thing which i would like to just add to what you just said is i mean i think you already kind of emphasized this we receive this feedback from multiple different sources so it, as a product manager especially uh, the new asp new product managers into the space uh may feel a little overwhelmed at the same time get influenced by some of the people are talking about uh, some pain points so never get influenced uh with that and to take a pinch of salt don't commit to anything before thinking so take everything digest it think through then respond so the last but not least uh, one thing which often comes to mind is uh, the ever changing the tech landscape right like as a pm uh we have to always uh, keep learning right so in this i mean i'm sure like as all of you are observing uh, with this new ai revolution going around i mean some people are thinking oh will product managers job is exist will like will they exist or will they vanish away with this ai and i think one thing which i've learned especially over the last a few months is earlier a product manager could be little non technical and be successful now with this all this ai and all that stuff looks like we are trending in direction where it's always good to have some technical skill as well as a product manager uh, when we're building products so what is uh, your say on this sunny yeah so there is there is a saying i heard somewhere that product manager is most of the time the dumbest guy in the room the reason for that is you're working with very smart engineers who can build products 
you're wo- working with very smart designers who can build world uh, world class products you could be working with operations teams who have excelled in scaling uh, products throughout uh, different countries or different uh, states etc so you might be the dumbest person in the room in terms of each of these interdisciplines but you are the someone who is bringing all of all of these guys together and finally building the product so you have to constantly upskill yourself as you go through the product so for example a year ago i was working on crypto based products now with the changing land- landscape i'm working on ai based products and constantly there is always a data need so you are always working on products which are based out of data and as you are working on front end products you need to clearly know some front end principles so that you don't make the dumbest mistakes possible when you are building products for the customers so take every product or every project that you are working on as a learning opportunity and continually learn through as you continually build the product because you will definitely not have all the required knowledge in order for you to build the products and if you have that thought process that i don't have that knowledge you are not going to go anywhere so think of every product as a new learning opportunity for you probably spend some time before it starts and continually learn as you go through what do you think yeah so for people uh, out there so if uh, someone is not like a very uh, learn and be curious then product management may not be the right fit i mean as you said i mean the customer expectations change the new technologies come into picture we have to con- constantly upskill ourselves in order to build the right products on the right tech stack with the right customer preferences and all that stuff so uh, in my experience uh, yes i mean uh, early i started myself as a non tech product manager where i was more focused on, on a customer facing products which were more on the front end side which is a little different skill set needed than where i'm currently working on i'm currently i'm more this is a lot technical what i currently work on one thing which is very important for me is to understand uh, the design the principles how we design this more around the data the data products and all that stuff so it's definitely a change for me uh, however uh, i'm really liking it i'm getting to learn something new uh, which i'm enjoying so for anyone out there if you don't like the new stuff and just be settled where you are and just like take that whatever you have skill and apply then product management may not be the right fit for you guys all right uh, i think we spoke about the top 5 i think uh, i like to uh, repeat that for um, anyone out there who might uh, not heard uh, everything like so you guys do a good self reflection before you think uh, a product management is the right fit for you or not right so those top 5 ones are uh, emotional quotient right so uh, this may be annoying for few uh, however having that emotional quotient that interpersonal skills is very important to become a successful product manager and the second is uh, decision making under pressure so product managers have to daily deal with a lot of pressure on their plate it's about navigating those complexities ambiguities successfully and that's very important the third uh, the constant juggle there are so many priorities that are on the plate of a product manager that you get from different teams or leadership stakeholders and all that stuff so it's about how you navigate those um, i mean ambiguity is the prioritization uh, which can be annoying for uh, many uh, the fourth uh, treating feedback as a tool rather than a threat so never take i mean i mean feedback personal as a product managers i mean few people may take feedback uh, as a like personal rather than opportunity for improvement so it's very important to uh, not take feedback uh, personally last but not least uh, the ever changing tech landscape right so the product managers are expected to continue to upskill uh, whatever they are trying to build uh, new products learning about new customers and all that stuff so overall if you i mean if someone is annoyed with these skills or does not want to uh, perform these some of these skills uh, in the workplace then product management may not be the right fit for you guys anything you want to add funny there no this is great um, there are several other things obviously which are like really really good things with the product management space all the all the things that we actually talked about 
uh, they can have a positive spin for for those as well decision making under pressure you will get that awesome skill where you can constantly understand things and then make decisions or feedback as a tool you will never take things personally in a product management career after some time and then you will learn to uh make meaningful outcomes out of things rather than taking it personally so there are several positive things obviously for anyone who's watching this video but keep definitely keep these things in mind before you choose a product management career yeah product management uh, can be very exciting very fun when you like it but however if you don't master these skills that we talked about it can be very devastating experience and you may not be successful uh, which i think everyone wants to be successful in the job um i think that's what we have for today uh thank you thank you